is a staple for both the Texan and American economy. The reliable energy sector, state-of-the-art facilities for medical research, and a shipping channel. It's a melting pot for community, and it's not hard to see why so many people are attracted. But there's a dark side to such an advantageous economy. Not only are goods circulated, but so are people. Every year, thousands of people become victims of a billion dollar human trafficking industry. As a designated global city, Houston oversees millions of imports and exports. Any Houstonian can tell you so, but what's not so widely known is the operating clandestine human trafficking industry that corrupts this city and the regard for human life. I met up with an editor against human trafficking to clear up any misconceptions that people might have over the practice and what people like you can do to put an end to it. What would you say is one of the biggest misconceptions about human trafficking? Yeah, great question, because I think that the biggest one that I hear is this is sex, it's just happening to females and it's just sex trafficking. And people don't understand that there is a whole labor side and people don't realize that men and boys are victims of trafficking too, both for sex and, and for labor. So I think that's the biggest misconception that we really have to break is who are the victims and what does human trafficking look like? How do people get involved in human trafficking? Yeah, so I, there's a variety of different ways that people are getting lured and recruited by traffickers. And there is so many different vulnerable populations that are at risk and, and just easy targets for, for traffickers. Um, so we can kind of break down that question into kind of like two parts, right? Who are vulnerable? So LGBTQ individuals, um, runaway and homeless youth, uh, those who have language barriers, those who might not know their rights in the United States, maybe they're coming from a national country, a foreign national country. Um, but, but in Houston, we really see a lot of LGBTQ and homeless individuals. And you ask like, so how does someone get kind of trapped in the trafficking situation? How does someone get lured? And it's so easy when someone runs, say they come out to their parents and maybe their parents don't agree with the way that they identify themselves and so they get kicked out or they run away, they th get thrown out, right? So the second they end up on the street, it's estimated that within the first 48 hours, um, one in three are actually approached by a trafficker. That's a huge number and that's such a significant time. And it's really easy for traffickers to know and pick out these vulnerabilities and see, um, okay, you have a youth on the street. I could just go up to them and ask them, oh, do you need a place to stay? Or do you, are you hungry? And it's so easy for traffickers to start building that relationship. Uh, we see a lot of traffickers use false uh, relationships to really hook their victims into a situation. We have traffickers who, who donate so much of their time to just the grooming process. And we're not just talking about a few days or a few weeks or a month. We're talking about months. We had a trafficker here in the Houston area that actually was grooming their victims for about nine months. So that can look like a very healthy relationship to that to that you know victim, that that young person, even even older individuals can easily get kind of wrapped up in in those feelings of love and lust. And before you know it, they're they've bonded with their trafficker. They're, they're in love with their trafficker. And in that moment, that's when the trafficker knows to kind of flip the switch and say, if you really love me, you'll do this. Or I've given you all these, these nice things. I've taken you out. I've supported you, given you a shelter. You owe me. And that can be really powerful to really make their victims comply to a trafficking situation. And then there's also that false, uh, the false job offers. Traffickers are, I hate to admit it, are really, really smart. And they'll go to great lengths to set up fake looking businesses, fake looking companies. We're talking about websites, business cards, you name it, they've got it covered. And, and before you know it, you're accepting a job 
and then it turns out to not be something that you actually signed up for. What do you consider exploitation in the case of human trafficking? Well, the question that you ask is interesting because essentially people can be exploited for their labor or exploited in different ways, um, but human trafficking is a severe form of exploitation where someone is being forced to work or forced to provide what's known as a commercial sex act, or in other words, forced into prostitution or sexual acts against their will. Um, so the definition between exploitation and human trafficking differs in the way that um, someone must be forced, defrauded, or coerced into providing that labor or service against their will. What are some other things that are entailed in human trafficking? So human trafficking consists of a couple of different forms beyond sex trafficking and sexual exploitation. Human trafficking can consist of people forced to work against their will. Um, a lot of people tend to not necessarily understand that labor trafficking can encompass any opportunity where someone could be forced to work. So that could be in a field as an agricultural worker, that could be as a technician within a nail salon, that could even be as a teacher in a school, all of which have been cases um, that have been uncovered here in the United States. How can people become aware of the tactics these companies use to spark actions against the perpetuation of human trafficking? So people can become more aware of human trafficking first by being educated about it, being able to identify a problem, because how can you begin to solve a problem if you don't know what it is? And so essentially we can strive to become educated consumers, not necessarily just about the issue of human trafficking and other kinds of exploitation, but also where our products come from. Um, a large majority of the world's victim population are those involved in labor trafficking, being exploited for their services. And essentially, if we can become educated consumers, we then petition our companies and vote with our dollars to support those who are treating people fairly for their wages and for their labor. What is exactly being done to combat human trafficking and how can an individual contribute to the end of human trafficking? Absolutely. Everyone and anyone can do something to end human trafficking, whether it's by learning about the issue, um, you know, receiving education from United Against Human Trafficking and our partner agencies about what it is, how to identify it, and what to, what to do. Um, you know, anyone can also purchase items to combat human trafficking. Uh, we at United Against Human Trafficking support ideas such as fair trade, where an independent third party certifies that a product supply line does not contain slave labor or exploitation. Um, so ideas like that, direct trade, or just really knowing where our products and services are coming from and who is being provided it. And not just be that, but are they being paid a fair and living wage? Um, so it's really all these ideas that people can utilize to um, become knowledgeable, become conscientious socially, and also become activists. Um, not just in purchasing goods and services, but also within our own government. Um, we have a lot of ways that people can help to support the work that we're doing and our partners across the city of Houston um, by just becoming more informed aware citizens. The good thing about our organization is about 85% of the funds, in fact more than 85% of the funds, go directly towards our programs and making sure that we are doing our best to make sure that people are informed about the dangers of human trafficking within, of course, the Houston area. Um, so being able to do that and let people know that their donations are going to such a great cause um, is not too hard. So um, we believe in what we do, we believe in our mission, we believe in the training that we provide. So why should you donate to United Against Human Trafficking? Your donation would help us to educate community members, healthcare professionals, law enforcement professionals, first responders, teachers, educators, social service providers, you name it. People who are on the front lines in identifying and serving victims of this crime. Because how can we begin to solve a problem if we don't even know how to find it or what to do if we encounter it? So your contribution would help us to further that work to create an aware and informed community and also to reach victims of human trafficking. If you donate to our organization, that proceeds goes to helping identify victims of human trafficking through our outreach efforts as we go on the streets, detention centers, homeless shelters, and work with foster care programs. 
In addition, it goes to youth programs where we go into schools and detention centers and wherever kids are to try to help them understand what human trafficking is, but most importantly, help them stay safe and out of the hands of traffickers. We ask you to help support our programs because you can make a difference. Your funds can really help identify and really help a person get out of a trafficking situation. 